We'll begin with the opening of the word. An invocation from Isaiah. Sing, O heavens, be joyful, O earth, and break out in singing, O mountains. For the Lord has comforted his people and will have mercy on the afflicted. And so we'll begin our worship this morning with singing hymn number 821, which I will share for you now. Thank you, Jean. So now I invite you to say with me our responsive reading, which I will share for you now. And our reading comes from Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. The darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you, all assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the hip. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you, the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land, young camels from Midian and Ephah, and all from Sheba will come, bearing gold 
and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. Amen. And now let us say together our affirmation of worship. We worship God, our loving Lord, who made us, who taught us in the Bible that all people are God's children and that we should love God and each other. When people turned away from God, he loved us enough to be born in our world as a baby. He grew up and lived the life he wants us to live. Risen now, he is still with us, our Lord and our God, helping us to grow more like him. This is why we know him as our savior. We are his disciples when we love him and show our love for him by being kind and helpful to one another. And so now it is time for us to pray. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Holy and ever-living God, by your power we are created and by your love we are redeemed. Guide and strengthen us by your spirit that we may give ourselves to your service and live each day in love to one another and you. O oh Lord, we thank you for the gateway of prayer, for the privilege of communing with you spirit to spirit, by which we may make known our cares and burdens and needs. Since you are the Christ of human experience and know our needs and desires even before we can frame them, give us to trust your all wise and all good providence and the patience to await the answers to our prayers in the spirit of not our will, but yours be done. Amen. And now we will sing together our next hymn, number 720, which I will share for you now. Thank you, Jean. So now we will begin our practice of Lectio Divina. And uh, Lectio Divina is an ancient practice of contemplative scripture reading. And usually when we do this together, I choose three different texts for us to hear. But today we will be listening to the same text in three parts because we are celebrating Epiphany this Sunday. And so I wanted to, us to be able to enjoy the entire Epiphany narrative. So that's what we will be using for our text today. And given that we have an opportunity then to enter a little more deeply into one text, I thought that I would just take a moment to set a little context to guide our contemplations. You know, as Swedenborgians, our interpretive framework is always to see biblical stories as ones that play out within ourselves. So I invite you today, when you hear about Herod, to consider the ways in which our own self-serving spirit asserts dominance at times. When we hear about the star, we are invited to consider the ways 
in which we are led by the Spirit, pieces of insight that have shined bright and helped us along. When we hear about the Magi and their gifts, we're invited to consider what journeys we are willing to take for the Lord and what gifts we are being called to offer. And although in the actual time of Jesus' birth, we don't really know if the visit from the Magi happened at the beginning of the year, for us, the new year really is the perfect time to reflect upon this story and to consider how we might wish to embody what it offers in the here and now and in the year to come. So we will be hearing from Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 through 12. And as I mentioned before, they will be divided into three parts and there will be a pause in between each part to just create a little bit of contemplative space for us to enjoy. And I'll go through those three parts three times each. And in between each round, you'll hear the sound of a singing bowl. And then at the end of those rounds, we will hear um, a Christmas blessing and then segue right into our practice of communion together. And so as you are listening to these texts today, I invite you to notice if there is a word or a phrase or an idea that is calling out to you, to just notice and to sit with that for a little bit and see what it might be trying to teach you. So I think with that, we are ready to begin. I invite you to just find a comfortable seat, to take a deep breath and to close your eyes if you wish. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, 
and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another way. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another way.
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another way. A Christmas Blessing by Joyce Rupp. May there be harmony in all your relationships. May sharp words, envious thoughts and hostile feelings be dissolved. May you give and receive love generously. May this love echo in your heart like the joy of church bells on a clear December day. May each person who comes into your life be greeted as another Christ. May the honor given the babe of Bethlehem be that which you extend to every guest who enters your presence. May the hope of this sacred season settle in your soul May it be a foundation of courage for you 
when times of distress occupy your inner land. May the wonder and awe that fills the eyes of children be awakened within you. May it lead you to renewed awareness and appreciation of whatever you too easily take for granted. May the bonds of love for one another be strengthened as you gather with your family and friends around the table of festivity and nourishment. May you daily open the gift of your life and be grateful for the hidden treasures it contains. May the coming year be one of good health for you. May you have energy and vitality. May you care well for your body, mind and spirit. May you keep your eye on the star within you and trust this luminescent presence to guide and direct you each day. And may you often go to the Bethlehem of your heart and visit the one who offers you peace. May you bring this peace into our world. Amen. So now I invite you to take a deep breath, feel the air filling your lungs and slowly return to us here. And as you do so, we will begin our celebration of communion and we'll start with our communion prayer, let us pray. Holy and merciful Lord, conscious of our need of you, we come to your holy table that you may feed us with the bread of life. We come not trusting in our own goodness, but in your kindness and steadfast love. In obedience to your word, we present ourselves before you to keep in the way of your own appointment, the blessed memorial of our redemption. Sanctify, O Lord, with your divine presence and bless with your heavenly grace that which we are about to do. And as of old, you blessed the bread and the cup which you gave to your disciples. Bless now the bread to be broken and the cup to be given in your name. Grant that we may receive them in the spirit of love and faith toward you and in peace with one another, that so we may be truly fed at your table with the spiritual food of your divine body and blood, and that the Holy Supper may be to us the sign and seal that we are your children, opening to us the mansions of heaven and conjoining us with you forever. Amen. When it was evening, Jesus sat at the table with the 12 disciples, and as they were eating, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus lifted up his eyes toward heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that the son may glorify you since you have given him power over all flesh 
to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And Jesus said, For their sake I consecrate myself, that they may also be consecrated in truth. Sanctify them in the truth. Thy word is truth. Now is the Son of Man glorified, and in him God is glorified. Jesus said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Whoever comes to me shall never hunger. Jesus said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Grace be to you and peace from the God who is, and who was, and who is to come. Amen. Friends, let us pray. From the Reverend Howard Thurman, a prayer entitled Through the Coming Year. O oh God, grant that I may pass through the coming year with a faithful heart. There will be much to test me and make weak my strength before the year ends. In my confusion, I shall often say the word that is not true and do the thing of which I am ashamed. There will be errors in the mind and great inaccuracies of judgment. In seeking the light, I shall again and again find myself walking in the darkness. I shall mistake my light for your light, and I shall drink from the responsibility of the choice I make. Nevertheless, grant that I may pass through the coming year with a faithful heart. May I never give the approval of my heart to error, to falseness, to vanity, to sin. Though my days be marked with failures, stumblings, fallings, let my spirit be free so that you may take it and redeem my moments in all the ways my needs reveal. Give me the quiet assurance of your love and presence. Grant that I may pass through the coming year with a faithful heart. And now let us pray together the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now friends, we will sing together our closing hymn number 734, which I will share for you now.
benediction from Revelation. Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and gratitude and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Let us go in peace and serve the Lord.